Hello and welcome to my show. Just before I came in here to the studio, I got some tragic news about a dear friend and fraternity brother from Bowdoin College. His name, uh, Paul Soule, who went to Deering High School and Bowdoin College, was drafted by the Dallas Cowboys. He passed away last night in a tragic incident. And uh, I just found out about it, and I want to give just a couple moments of silence uh, for him. Thank you. We begin our show with another friend who passed away recently. His name, F. Lee Bailey Esquire. And I am so proud to know that uh, in my last interview, uh, which has been airing for the last couple of months with my, one of my co-hosts today, Rob Baldacci, uh, we interviewed F. Lee Bailey. And we had the last interview with him before he passed away. It was a great honor for both of us. Uh, there was a magazine article done about him, which is out now, a magazine called Tribute, done by one uh, Gio, uh, Giovanna um, Bonomo. And uh, I dedicate this show to her and to Jenny Sisson, uh, who would be F. Lee Bailey's uh, assistant and who helped us uh, organize that show. So I begin by asking you first, Ken. Ken, you were the person that first introduced me to F. Lee Bailey. Uh, you had a case going with him, and then he went to Chicago when you became the head of the National Divorce Lawyers. What was it like to have him speak on your behalf at that event a few years ago? Well, actually, quite a few years ago. <laughs> well, it was a great honor, and I have to tell the story because, of course, you and I are law partners, and I get our receptionist, Michelle, one day said to me, uh, some clown who says he's definitely babies on the phone. <laughs> And yeah. so I said, yeah. So I pick it up. I assumed it was you doing a joke, and I heard right. this deep, resonant voice, and I recognized his voice immediately. Yeah. He says, hi, this is Lee Bailey, and uh, I have a legal issue in Maine I'd like you to help me out on. The hearing's tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks a lot, <Yeah>. Lee. <laughs> so Lee and I got to be very close friends. Yeah. And um, so I was sworn in as president of the American Academy of Matrimonial Lawyers in 2012, and we're allowed to pick somebody to swear us in. And to me, the greatest legal mind I know him in the history of the United States of America is Lee I, Bailey. I mean, I just thank you. hands down. And he just, yeah. I said, Lee, would you do me the honor? He said, sure. When do we go? And he came and swore me in. And I will tell you, there was some controversy about it. I he, remember that, Ken, because I was there. there really? Some people, because he was disbarred in Florida, yeah. who thought that that was such a stain on him. Yeah. That we, same as the Bar Association of Maine, I must say, right. to a yeah. certain extent. We can talk about to. that, I'm sure, uh, later. But, you know, I said to people, He's F. Lee Bailey. What yeah, are right. you talking about? <laughs> I know. Well, you know, you guys aren't even in the shadow. Right. So I was very honored, and it was well, thrilling, and he was a good friend and um, a great lawyer and just a great legal mind. I just don't think you'd do better than F. Lee Bailey. Ken, the reason why I remember that is because I carried his bags to the airport. <laughs> and I said to <laughs> his briefcase. Well, his bags, because <laughs> we were on the same plane, had the hotel rooms next to each other, and I said, Lee, yeah. Uh, one of the greatest honors of my life to carrying your bags to the airport. And Ken, I also remember that once he got there, I don't think there was a person there that didn't want to come over and get a selfie with him. Absolutely. So, and uh, yeah, and, and uh, yeah, he, he gave a great speech. I was so proud to go there with you. Rob, uh, I recall at his birthday party, probably seven years ago, his 80th birthday, uh, out in Falmouth, yep. he was thanking various people in his life. He thanked you, Ken. He thanked Peter Detroit, his lawyer. And then he goes, and I want to thank someone very special, Rob Baldacci. So over the last several years, you became quite uh, close to him. and quite involved in some of his uh, uh, understandings of his project. What, what about was some of his projects here in Maine, like the aviation project? Well, he, he got involved with Oxford Aviation, uh, w and I had been involved with a number of uh, startup companies, and I'd, I'd always seek out Lee for advice. And he was just in, in, incredible. And I, we uh, had a company that made uh, headphones, uh, headsets for the fast food industry. And uh, Lee got to be on the board of advisors. Uh, his advice and counsel was uh, just incredible. And uh, and when I had my shows here at uh, at the right. uh, like channel, you had 5, a show like Shark Tank. We had a called, like a, called Pitch Me. Pitch Me. And, and a, Lee, yeah. every one of those shows, he he made a point of. Uh, sitting in as a, uh, on the panel uh, as we <laughs> listen to entrepreneurs, whether they're a 12-year-old. Uh, we right. had a kid's show, yeah. and, and uh, it was just precious uh, to uh, a number of entrepreneurs who've gone on to be uh, very, very successful here in Maine. And, and those shows, thankfully, are all available on YouTube. 
But Lee was so generous with his time, Darius, yes. uh, and his friendship. I mean, he, he and I became very, very close. And I remember as a birthday present, he said, Rob, I want to take you and Beth to, uh, to meet B.B. King, who uh, oh. he and B.B. He, he and King uh, were very close, and they traveled all around the country uh, to, to talk with the uh, <clears throat> prison inmates, uh, to yeah, help a them. a big project for him. That, yeah. that was. In fact, in B.B. King's autobiography, he, he goes on uh, uh, at length about his friendship with Lee. So we had a chance in Bangor to, to meet him, and uh, it, was, it was incredible, incredible opportunity. And you sat on the I stage. Loved, sat on, sat on the stage. B.B. King, King asked us to sit on the stage, uh, introduced Lee, introduced <laughs> us to the thousands of people uh, that, that uh, attended the concert. And it was, uh, and there were a lot of stories that emanated from that, which I won't get into t today. But uh, he, he's wow. incredible. <laughs> yeah. And incredible friend, uh, Derry, and uh, spent a lot of time work, working with businesses, help, working with me on a number of different projects. Right. So I miss him now, terribly. Ken, over the years of uh, our show here at Law on the Line, and thank you so much, Ken. The reason, folks, I'm here is because of this wonderful law partner that joined my firm, and the next thing you know, I know my, my career skyrocketed. But, Ken, you have interviewed and had a lot of celebrities on your GAN talk show. You've been on national news. You've commented on national things. Um, uh, where does F. Lee Bailey place in terms of the people that you've interviewed and, and talked with in terms of his eloquence and his legal ability? Well, this is the thing about Lee Bailey. He he was a great lawyer, the greatest trial lawyer. I, know, I would but agree. He was a personality. Right. He became an entertainment personality. TV shows. He was larger than life. And and when you think yeah. about great lawyers in the history of the United States and other countries, yes. how many of them became a TV personality? <laughs> personality in his own right. Right. That's right. And he was magnetic. Perry Mason. <laughs> but he was real, and uh, and he was so animated. He was. Well, like a great trial lawyer, he was a storyteller. Right. Because yeah. trial law is telling a story to a jury and and resonating with them and I, having them identify with your client. And of course, he had the greatest cases in the history. And he took, I mean, the Sam Shepard case, which was right. he represented him on his eleventh appeal. Right. Ten appeals. Was it got the eleventh appeal? Oh, appeal? Okay, I didn't know Ten that. Ten got denied. Yeah. He took the eleventh appeal and won. And it becomes the TV the show fugitive. The Fugitive and becomes the movie, movie The Fugitive. You have Patty Correct. Hearst. You have the Boston right. Strangler. And what I loved about Lee is yep. Lee was not one of these lawyers whose every client's innocent. That's you know, right. you, you, you represent, oh, no, my client was, you well, know, O.J. Simpson. Right there. Now, yeah. of course, he says that O.J. Simpson was innocent, which we can get which into. He does in his book. Want. But I, he talked about the Boston Strangler, who he described to me as the most evil man he had ever met. Oh, my goodness. He talked about Patty Hearst. He talked about Sam Shepard. He talked about these big cases. And it was very honest and forthcoming about it. So what was so great to interview him was he was real, he was honest, mm -hmm. he was direct, and he was down to earth. He, he never came yes. off as being superior to anyone. No, He remembered no. his roots. Ken, one Absolutely. of the people that I know among my friends, whatever, made a comment when he was arrogant. I go, arrogant? I said, exactly the opposite. They go, I said, no, exactly the opposite. Ken, I remember he did an interview uh, just before he spoke to the Chamber of Commerce about his prison program. Right. And I'll never forget, he's talking about the case, and your co-host at the time, who remained nameless, uh, made a comment like, oh, excuse me, come on, what about this, what about that? And I'll never forget, he goes, well, one of us was present at that trial every day, and the other one has a talk show here in Portland, Maine. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was, he also was Mike my Violet. former co-host, yeah. Mike Violet, who I still do a periodically yeah. show with. I just, it was typical he, Mike. Uh, <laughs> well, he was talking about the O.J. Simpson. Yes, party, he was. And Mike yeah. said, oh, come on, everybody knows he's guilty. He that's, says, right. Well, that's right, that's right. Everyone who doesn't know the evidence. Yeah. Yeah. And Lee Bailey explained why yeah. uh, O.J. Simpson, from his perspective, was innocent. We all look at, oh, how could he be innocent? Well, Lee Bailey would tell you why, and agree exactly, with and and exactly. I I, w I would encourage everybody to read his new book. Yeah, and, uh, and Rob, how many times have people said to you or me, and the reason oh, I'm not going to bother? I go, that's because you want to hold on to your opinion. But if right. you want to, if you want to read something that's mesmerizing, yeah. go ahead. And and, and Rob. As I've told people, as an attorney, when I finished that book, I absolutely had a reasonable doubt, even without the firm and uh, testimony. Yeah. Uh, I hope I hope it's I hope it's sales off off the charts. And Rob, 
I want to Do talk too. to you about the inter interview that uh, uh, Giovanna uh, wrote, and she's apparently an accomplished author, and she writes for this uh, high-end magazine, yep. and that article, they're going to post it up on the, uh, on the screen here so you folks right. can see it. But it was very complimentary to him. Uh, it, it basically caught the essence well, of what she, you're saying. I today. had reached out to her, yes. uh, and uh, she, she's phenomenal. She's, uh, uh, represent, she's the feature editor for a, uh, a world-renowned uh, uh, magazine right. called Preferred Magazine, based out of uh, Canada. She lives in Italy, and uh, she was in the process of uh, arranging an interview with Lee. Oh. And we had to cancel it a couple of times because of his health. Right. And uh, unfortunately, he passed away. Yes. Uh, so uh, she still wanted to do an article, and uh, I'd recommended that she connect with you and a number of other people. And the result is uh, just a great testament to to Lee, and I'm so so proud of what she did. And uh, I think Lee is up in heaven, uh, looking down with a big smile on his it face, was, saying, It was the first right. article, Rob, and I was so proud to be quoted in it. And I, yes. and I thought to myself, when would my name be mentioned in the same breath or sentence as the name F. Lee Bailey? For me, Ken and, and Rob, it was a dream come true because I followed him as a, as a student in junior high, then in high school, then in law school. And I told Lee this story once. I said, Lee, back in high school, if you started asking a bunch of questions to your friends, they go, who do you think you are, F. Lee yeah, Bailey? That's right, exactly. <laughs> well, he uh, was the, he was, the bar was very high. He, right. he was the epitome of trial law. You know, yeah. folks, before, I don't want to get to the end uh, and then realize we didn't have enough time to cover the subject because <laughs> the subject was Maine's, uh, Lee's ties to Maine. We know about the prison project that, yeah. that he advocated to give these guys a job. That if yeah. you give them jobs, they will, they will, their, their uh, chances of recidivism are very low. But what I want to get to is the Maine bar admission that all three of us were involved in. Yes. You, uh, Rob, and Ken, you testified on his behalf. I did an affidavit on his behalf. My dear friend, Peter Detroit, was his, was his uh, a lawyer. Did a great job. Proceedings. And Ken, we are, uh, to, for the audience's understanding, he, he takes the bar, takes it in a suit, by the way. 80 passes years old, flying 81, colors. yep. Then they vote five to four. There's nine people on the bar examiners, they're called. Some are lay people, some are lawyers, and they vote five to four, not eight to one or seven, five to four against. He appeals to Donald Alexander, one of the finest justices in Maine history, who was yes. a Supreme Court judge. You get the, he hears the case, Ken. You testify. Yes. Evidence. Uh, uh, all kinds of uh, right. uh, evidence and testimony comes in there, and Donald Alexander says he gets admitted. Yep. And they appeal to the Supreme Court, which comes down three to two, with a Chief Justice dissenting against them. Ken, my question to you is, could, could they have just left it at Donald Alexander and let him have the, have the license? Or, well, were they compelled to, to file that appeal? Oh, of course they're not. And, and this, this is a black stain, in my opinion, on the Maine Bar Association. I, I agree. I have to say, and I'm very proud to be a lawyer. I'm very proud to be a lawyer in Maine. I think for the most part, lawyers are ethical and responsible in the state of Maine. The, the, the disbarment of Lee Bailey in Florida was a sham, in my oh, yeah. opinion. It was a political move. Yep. There was some dispute about his fee with a client who was a government witness, and the government says, you can't keep it, we get it, and he was getting paid that way. It was just, but so what? I mean, this was not an ethical violation. This was really a political thing. Yep. But even if he got disbarred, that was years ago. Yes. This is the greatest lawyer who's ever lived in the United States. And he wants to be a member of the main bar association, and you're telling me he can't be because he doesn't meet your ethical standards seriously? And it was outrageous. And and frankly, uh, I was embarrassed that the board of overseers rejected his application. It was five to three, uh, five to four. I think Justice Alexander had a two-day trial, right? Uh, extensive uh, mm -hmm. testimony. And it would Lee, Lee would have testified. Sure, of course. Oh, yeah. So, so Lee testifies before Donald Alexander, who they say one of the most brilliant, and he gets to see the credibility. Yeah. He gets to see the emotion of this man and the honesty of this man. Yep. And and yet and and says, oh, okay, I th I I think he's I think he's ready to come back and and, and for some reason the, the law court three to two. Uh, whatever. And let me, I, I, one, and let me go ahead, Kenny. Thing. Yeah. With all due respect, the lawyers make mistakes. We're human. There are lawyers in every state, including Maine, that have done some pretty bad things, have paid their dues, have been readmitted to the bar. Yeah, exactly. The bar. Right. Nothing close 
I mean, far worse than Lee Bailey. Yeah. And they're practicing members of the bar now. And it is a stain, and I, and I have to yeah. apologize for being critical of my bar association. But Lee was one of the most ethical people I ever met. I asked him advice in ethical quandaries. True. And, and he yes. gave me advice. And to say that this person doesn't meet the ethical standard of the main bar association, nonsense. I, well, I agree. I, it's a, it was a travesty. Well, uh, thank you, Ken and Rob, because now you two are on my committee. <laughs> yeah. My committee to keep his name alive in this state and uh, to honor him in some aspects. Will uh, scholarships or something that we'll figure out to do? I hope so. Rob, um, you had the opportunity to get to know uh, uh, other people in his life. For example, other others. For example, he was very close to Harry Belafonte. He would tell you stories about these. Can you tell me a story you remember that he might have told you about some celebrity, <laughs> like well, he, or something? Uh, Frank Sinatra, uh, Belafonte, uh, Connie uh, Francis, uh, Connie Francis, oh my you know, God. Yes. who he dated for a while. Yes. Uh, he, if, with with Lee, it was it was uh, he, it was a joy to sit down with him and just listen to him. Right. Uh, whether it was uh, the JFK assassination, yes, or the My Lai massacre, or uh, Watergate. He was involved. People really don't realize this. He you was involved in a lot of yeah. these asp uh, a lot of these things. Yes. And uh, whether it was a mafia boss from New York or right. a uh, or a TV personality, uh, he he was w the the thing that I I was impressed with Lee is, and I would encourage your listener your viewers to watch a speech that he made here in Maine, talking about how to give a speech. Really? And if you ever listened to Lee or watched him, he never said ah. I, I, he I never hesitated I was say or that. said you, said you know. That's right. He brilliant. I was okay. going to mention. Okay. 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 Yeah. Uh, it was it was incredible, and he spoke without notes, and he and he uh, would talk about how prepared he would get to present a case, and uh, if you if you ever watched any of his cross examinations, he never had a note with him. A remarkable man. Uh, I don't think we'll ever see anybody l quite like him, uh, Derry and Ken. Well, well, uh, Derry comes pretty close. <laughs> Derry's close. Derry's close. <laughs> that is the funniest thing we've said all day long. Talk Derry's about, close. Talk about opposite ends of a continuum, Derry yeah. and Matt, Lee Bailey. Uh, you know, I, when I first started practicing law and doing criminal cases, I read his book by, by Bailey and Rothblatt, How to Do a Criminal Trial. Oh, you and did. And I remember one day, uh, pulling some antic in the courtroom, and I remember the judge asking, Terry, wh wh where did you get that? I go, uh, the Bailey book. He goes, well, don't do it again. <laughs> <laughs> you know, reading some of Lee Bailey's books, are, I yeah. mean, what a great to be writer. A great writer, great writer. He just was a great writer, and a great, I mean, just he was all around just an incredible human being. Yeah. Really much. So much Ken, to give. Yeah. Ken, you, you wrote a little small story. I don't know if you want to share the complete details about a birthday card that you got from, from Lee. I, yeah, that's yeah. Tell, tell us, Kenny. Yeah. On Kenny? my 60th birthday, yeah. Yeah. I got a birthday card from yeah. him. He had a little blue pill. I did, there you go. The card. That's as far as we'll go. Uh, don't ask me why he thought it was an appropriate <laughs> gift. I gave it back to him, by the way. Oh, you and didn't I, use well, it? Well, he, he was. <laughs> uh, let's be honest, he was 19 years older than me. That's right. Okay. True. So let's yeah. be fair. Yeah, I'm sure that pill was a Salmonex. Yeah, I can tell you some other Lee Bailey stories, but I think I will. Yeah, no, I, I same <laughs> well, here. You know, when, when I remember uh, uh, the first night we had dinner, the three of us with him over in Falmouth, and and uh, he was chatting, and I did mention Frank Sinatra, and this is what I thought was very credible. I said, uh, Lee, uh, he, 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 Harry Bell, what about Frank Sinatra? Now, I expected him to say, oh, like this, oh, oh my God, he'd call me every day for advice. He goes, well, we had dinner one night, but it was two big egos in the same room. Yep. He says, so uh, I'm not sure we got real close to each other. I thought to myself, what an honest answer yes. to say that two big egos, and I wanted to say, you know, really, so you think, you, yeah, so naturally. He had the same issue with Donald Trump when he, when, uh, he met with him. Oh, really? Uh, Roy Cohn. Uh, the, oh, my God. Uh, Roy Cohn. The stories uh, Lee would tell. I think one of the funniest things uh, that uh, experiences I had with Lee is he always promoted himself as, you know, the best uh, airline pi uh, uh, 
pilot, very, pu uh, very proud of his sailor. Family. You know, he grew up on the water. Oh, he was and, a sailor too. Oh yes, I didn't know oh that. yes. Just ask him; he'd yeah. tell you. But uh, my wife happens to well, be a very accomplished story. sailor. I'm not going to go into the whole detail of it. <laughs> yeah. We we had dinner reservations at Diamond Diamond Cove, and Lee had a sailboat. He uh, Beth and I uh, were joining him, and and he and Debbie at the time, and uh, and it was. Uh, I won't say a it. A harrowing experience. A harrowing experience <laughs> to the point where I think Beth, uh, it, it got so bad, he almost killed me uh, coming on the way back because the boat got tan tangled up on some lobster pots and uh, it was a cluster, if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh and we, will, we, we came out of it, Beth was not pleased. And uh, I don't think she talked to Lee for maybe a year or so. Oh, yeah. oh. <laughs> Correct. So what, what kind of a he boat? He was trying to it guide them through the water, and, and Beth knew more about it. Yes, than so absolutely. Lee was older. So Whose boat were you on? A friend of Lee's. Oh, a friend of his. Yes, a friend of his who he was using the sailboat at the time. But who was operating him? He was, but then Beth had to take over and oh, try to. Oh my goodness! And it was <laughs> not. It was not a pleasant sight. But anyway, and, and then they ultimately became, you know, re reconnected yeah. and became very, very close. And uh, you know, one of my favorite stories, if we have time to tell, is in the O.J. Simpson trial. Where right. he talks about how he induced Chris Darden. Oh yes. Oh yes. To, have to put the, to have the, a, the glove. Put the glove. glove on. And one of the things he says is, "Have you ever seen O.J. Simpson's hands?" He yeah. said, "How many times did he fumble in his NFL career? Yeah. Yeah. Never. His his hands are like basketball. That's right." And he said, oh, "It's like your hands." Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> so I, well, I knew that that glove wouldn't fit. Besides blood shrinking the glove. Yeah. And he just he kept daring Darden. He says, "You don't have the you don't have the guts to do that." He didn't say guts. He used, yeah. he used a different word. Yeah. That's right. Cojones. He said, "You don't have the." You know, he kept sending him notes. Yeah. And he, you know, this is Lee Bailey. This is a great legal mind. He's sitting there taunting the other side to do something stupid. It literally was Darden dead. Tom Sawyer and the fence. And if yeah. the glove doesn't fit. You got to equip. I, I, it, what, what, what is amazing about that, and he tells that story the same every time, he said they would all go out drinking at night and that Marsha and Darden were quite oh, starstruck. Yeah. You got Dershowitz, you got uh, F. Lee Bailey, Shapiro, yep. starstruck. And after a few drinks, everybody seems to open up. But there's one thing that we do know, the three of us. Uh, this was a man who could hold his liquor. And you recall <laughs> that Nathan Lane yes. played him, and they made reference to that. And yet never once during that series did they portray him as some uh, 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 idiot, some no. drunken idiot. No. Uh, and so he would get them all out, and they'd all be drinking and laughing and joking. <laughs> They said, Darden, you, you, but you don't have it. And when Darden made the motion, they said, no objection. Yeah. <laughs> he did like uh, Bailey's quite a bit. And I said, is that because you have a family right. interest in it? Right. Said, well, they named it after. So I, I might as well drink it. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, Ken, uh, in the course of, uh, of our career, that we have uh, gone to court many, many times. And yet, if you add up all the times that you've been to court, which as a divorce lawyer, you're in there almost every day, sure. myself as a trial lawyer, we wouldn't even cast a shadow upon the number of times that he has appeared in courts and in big courts. Yeah, that's oh, yeah. I mean, every case is important yeah. to your client, but you talk about the big name cases. You know, you, you'd go to it, to Lee Bailey. If you were O.J. Simpson, who else do you want to hire? Bring him on the team. If you're, yep. uh, you know, if you're Patty Hearst, you know, you want to hire the best. I mean, listen, there's no, there are many great trial lawyers through the history of the United States. I mean, many Supreme Court justices yep. who were great trial lawyers. Um, Thurgood Marshall was one of the great trial lawyers in our lifetime. Sat next to him during his uh, 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 confirmation. Marshall. Not but, next to him, but within but, a few feet. But, <laughs> yeah. but, but simply not, because, because Lee Bailey was the trial lawyer. Yeah. He is the standard, and if you want to, you want to. If you could be half as good as Lee Bailey, you are great. Well, John Roberts, who's the chief justice, yes. uh, had a summer home in Maine, and he invited Lee out. Uh, they I spent didn't know some that. time. Yes. Uh, they were I friends. I didn't know he has a summer I mean, up near yeah. Isle, I believe. Correct. And One he of my invited friends Lee actually goes over and visits and, him. That's yeah, true. Yeah. I, I just think, to go back to the main bar, and yeah. I'm not a lawyer. My, I've got family members who are. You're as good as a lawyer, though, Rob. Thank you, sir. <laughs> uh, I, again, I, it, it, it's, it's a tragedy to see what, what happened. But the thing that I, the point I'd like to make about Lee is after that defeat, Yes. He, uh, the Marine fighter pilot, which is near and dear to him and who yeah. he really is, uh, yes. 
he went on with his life, picked his head up, and, uh, and still tried to contribute to the community and to help businesses here in Maine and to, to, to help his friends and, uh, and, and write and continue yeah, we on with his career. It, and he never said a word. Right. Uh, yeah. Which I thought was a, a tribute to him. By the way, Rob, I was sitting right next to you uh, during the Supreme Court hearing and, and turned to you and said, they're, they're not going to overturn Don Alexander. Oh, I know. They have, they have no reason to, number one, and number two, they have great respect. Yep. Um, but I, I will uh, t tell you that um, Bailey had these ties to Maine, and as you mentioned, giving advice, I saw him one day sitting with Dan Lilly, who, by the way, folks, great another trouble. great lawyer. People would honor him by calling him oh, the yeah. F. Lee Bailey of Maine. Yep. But my partner, Bill Childs, would call him for advice, uh, including yep. a, a big case that we have in the office right now, what remain un, un, unmentioned. Yep. But, and, and you would call him, Ken. Of course. And, and here you are, in my opinion, the, the best divorce lawyer in Maine. And Absolutely. You would, and, you would, and you would call, and what about this? And he would have a, he would have a, have a, have a, 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 a thing to say about it. Yep. Well, the greatest it. honor was when he called me to ask him to handle a case for him. It's like, yeah. seriously? Yeah. You know, uh, will you tell me how to do it? Because nobody's better than you. <laughs> a great honor and great lawyer. And, and once again, I have to say, I apologize for the bar of Maine for doing the, what I think is the stupidest well, thing. Well, you know, something, exactly. the fact that we say it, whatever. We give, it, we give them both a pass. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, 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 it was a five to four decision. Who, who knows, somebody felt strongly that they took it all the way. So be it. But Ken, we, we began this by talking about uh, how, how you met him, but I'm going to say that I sat in my office and heard this. Ken, F. Lee Bailey on line one. And I went, what? Get out of here. I jumped out of my chair, ran, I said, Michelle, did you just say F. Lee Bailey on line one? Well, goes, I thought it was you. <laughs> no, you <laughs> thought it was you. He goes, yeah. Anyway, I want to thank the both of you, uh, not only for being the friends that you are, for Ken, uh, Lauren, the line, uh, and, and, and Rob, uh, for you, Anything, uh, setting up those interviews uh, with, with, with Bailey. We had no idea that he would uh, pass within no. days of our interview. I know it. But I know, Rob, that you mentioned to me when we, at Ken's party, you go, Derry, my only concern was that the camera was too close to my face on Zoom. And <laughs> oh, so, yeah, that's right. And so I have to say to you, Bailey was, uh, had this beautiful wall painting. <laughs> hang, hang, yeah. hang, but I want to say, Rob, uh, of the three of us, you look the best. <laughs> <laughs> that's only because I wasn't on that interview. Yeah, that's right, Kenny. <laughs> that's that would have changed uh, the whole dynamic. Uh, folks, uh, that's it for Law on the, li <laughs> law on the Line. See the way I go. That's it for the Dairy Runlet Show. Uh, we'll see you next month. And thank, thank you, you very much, guys, for coming on. Thank, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah.